Welcome to the Cyber Kumite. I'm Tim Wainwright. This is Chris Salerno. Uh, today, our topic is red teams versus pen tests versus purple teams. Today's episode is brought to you by Red Mob, hmm. the only crowdsourced hacking service which guarantees your applications will be tested by a hacker who has been charged but not convicted of wire fraud. Important. Chris, what's the uh, brief history of pen testing, red teams, and purple teams? Well, there's no, uh, there's no brevity in this history, but I'm going to try to cover it in about 60 seconds here. Uh, so we started out with pen testing, and the pen tester's goal was to find as many impactful observations they can in a time frame allotted. And so what happened was the blue team didn't stand a chance. There was no real detection years and years ago, uh, so much so that we used to joke that we could write the report before starting the testing. The same TTPs in general were used for a while, but then something happened. The blue team got better. They stepped up their game, and so we decided, okay, now we really have to test our defenses now that we actually have some, and that was the start of red teaming. And red team's focus was less on the breadth and more on the depth of getting very specific flags in the organization and testing the response capabilities of the SOC or the CERT, for instance. Uh, but that only exasperated the bad blood between red and blue. And while a little competition is healthy, flat out hatred never is. And so enter purple teams where we really aim to take a collaborative approach to the whole thing. An open book exam, both sides sitting at the same table, working together towards a common goal and making the company more secure. And that's where we're kind of standing right now. Hopefully that was 60 seconds or less because there's a lot more to talk about here. It was actually less than 60 seconds. Yeah, you beat your, you beat your record. Um, I, so why do, why would I do one over the other then? I understand the progression and the history and, and certainly I, I was there with you doing some of this stuff, right? But what, what's, what's the most valuable thing to do if you only do one of these procedures is the fact that according to your timeline, purple teams is the latest. Does it mean that's the one you should do? Like why, why would you still do these other things if, if purple teams exist now? There's good reasons to do each of these. And so pen testing is obviously something that's still a mainstay in compliance frameworks everywhere. Anytime you're dealing with a compliance framework, there's gonna be a sentence in there that says you must pen test at least one, once a year. But that's not the only reason to do a pen test. A pen test, as mentioned, covers a lot of ground and it often finds things that otherwise you wouldn't. And so that contrasts with the purple team where you're testing very specific things that you've already predetermined that you're going to test. And I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but where you want to cover on red teams is really when you're interested in testing your defensive capabilities from more of a process standpoint. The pen test will test them from a technical standpoint. You'll see if you know, the, uh, the, the, the tools are blocking appropriately. Uh, you'll see if things get, uh, get bubbled up but they won't necessarily test how the SOC or the CERT reacts to a real world lengthy kind of test. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention in red teams, it's often a much longer duration than a pen test. You're talking probably six to eight weeks of actual testing time versus a yeah, pen sometimes test. longer. One or two, yeah, sometimes even longer. Um, so you wanna do that when you're interested in a flag. Hey, we've got this thing on our network that basically if someone gets access to, that means a very bad situation for the company. It means something maybe that the company can't recover from. And we wanna see if somebody can gain access mm -hmm. to that, the secret formula, the whatever they've got on, on the inside. Um, and, then, and then there's purple. And, and so why would you do purple? You would do purple to, to improve and to really measure uh, because what pen testing and red teaming never got you was measurement. It never really got to the point where yeah. you could understand, am I improving? Are my defenses improving? And finally, with purple team, if you want to answer that question for the board, you should run those. I think one of, one of the things I've seen is that we've, I agree with you that pen testing and red teams were bad at quantitative measurement. Yeah. And I, I've seen organizations get in trouble trying to do it anyway. Uh, and a lot of times it happened if it was if it was driven by internal audit or, or third line or something like that, where they said, well, this year we had 25 issues and this year we had 33 issues. So we're worse. And it's like, whoa, hang on. Like, don't make this something that it isn't. That's not yeah. what we're saying. How many highs were there? <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you're saying, but you're saying with purple teams, we can actually do something quantitative that's more meaningful yeah. year over year, quarter over quarter. Yeah. That, that, that's really the point. And, and that measurement is something that you can be, be pretty confident in 
And it's also not one of those measurements or metrics that changes wildly uh, because you have control over what you're testing. You have control over the total number of tests that you're conducting. And now that we've got the MITRE ATT&CK framework, we've got something yeah. uh, to kind of box it in with. Yeah, and so and so that this is something that we've been we've been pioneering with some of the organizations we work with, but we call this the we call this the defense success metric. And I think we'll you know in in, in a future Kumite we should we should show it. We can kind of visually depict it. But it's the idea that you can create a single metric uh, of your defense success. And I know that sounds crazy, but we're doing it. We've seen it done. And the idea is that if you have a scope for a scope of test cases for a purple team, let's say you're going to test. Um, 50 MITRE techniques. Um, they are specifically chosen MITRE techniques. You're not saying you're going to do 160 and try to cover one technique with every single, uh, or one test case with every single technique. It's not necessary to start that way. You don't have to do it that way. You can say, we know we care more about, you know, lateral movement and initial access and privilege escalation and a few other areas. And we're going to focus on those first. But the point is you design the purple team for things that you know you care about, either based on threat intelligence or, you know, common knowledge of what, uh, of what attackers do. And then the metric is your success in detecting or blocking one of those 50 test cases. So it's some number, let's say we were successful at 35 of them. And then the denominator is 50. It's the, it's the number of test cases that you brought in. So you're intentionally controlling that denominator. And then that can meaningfully be retested quarter over quarter or month over month or year over year, whatever the cadence is to show this is how we're tracking against the defense success metric that, that, uh, you know, that we're aiming for. Yeah. You know, I, I've, and, and I think we're on the right track with it, but when I think about what's still most popular out there, I still see pen tests as most popular. And mm -hmm. I don't know the reason for that. What do you think it is? Did you think pen tests are still most popular? You, you talked to probably most. Yeah, I, I do think pen tests are the most popular and red teams are not really changing it. Hmm. And here's why. Most of the time when someone asks for a pen test, or sorry, when they ask for a red team, they're really just asking for a pen test that they want to call a red team because it sure. sounds cooler. Um, and, and, and they'll have some non-specific trophies. Oh, well, your trophy is to get access to the internal network. And it's like, well, you mean like a pen test? Like <laughs> that's, you know, that, that, that's part of it. And so, and so you, when, I, when, I, when I field those questions, I have to understand, are they really interested in stealth? That's kind of one of the main things because stealth takes longer. Do you want, to, do you want, do you want the, the ethical hackers to find as much as they can in a certain time box, because that's a pen test. Yeah, but if sure. you want to really simulate what an advanced threat actor is gonna do, give them plenty of time to do it, and that means more budget, and answer that question that you hinted at earlier, whoa, what happens if, if this happens, you know, we're going nuclear, that's a red team. But I see a lot of organizations calling pen tests red teams for that reason. And the interesting thing too is, I think that the, the reason why red teams has gotten more popularity and gotten in, uh, and is in the vocabulary of more um, C-suites and boards now is because of audit committees yeah. um, and participation on audit committees and boards from uh, executives outside of the organization who've had this done. So someone who's been in financial services and has been doing real red teams and they've seen the results of a red team in that in a large financial services organization, that executive sitting on the board of a healthcare company or a retail company or whatever it may be and saying, we got to do red teams. Like this is, this is the end all be all. And then a lot of times it doesn't really wind up being a red team. Like I said, it winds up being a pen test, but, but that's why I think red teams as a term is growing in popularity, but I agree with you. Pen test is still, the most popular of, yeah. uh, of these procedures and, and it's, and spelled out in compliance requirements and things yeah. like that. Speaking of, speaking of confusing things and confusing terms and, and different tool sets we have back when we had the pen tests, uh, we tried to automate the pen test somewhat in terms of vulnerability scanning. And so now we're seeing different uh, types of tools. We're seeing these uh, breach and attack simulation, BAS tools and continued mm -hmm. validation style things like, where, where are they? How do they relate? Like, are they actually automating red teams? Yeah, great question. And, and, I, and I have been studying this space before I answer your question. Another sponsor message from RedMob, mm -hmm. the crowdsourced hacking service that takes the ethical out of ethical hacking. That's RedMob. Check them out. Um, you asked, uh, can red teams be automated? Is that the vision of this BAS space, this breach yeah. and attack simulation space? Uh, it is evolving fast. To me, what I, what I saw was initially 
you know, a couple, a couple, a couple acronyms, RTA and BAS. And, and I think Gartner was saying BAS way before anyone else. Um, and that's probably one, you know, I think it's one of the terms that they made up and their analysts did, did a nice job of writing some of that up. I got a chance to speak to some of them about it um, last year. But RTA, Red Team Automation, was kind of a buzz that I think started taking off, but I think thankfully is dying because the idea of automating a red team is just like saying that, like you hinted at with vulnerability management to a pen test, we still do both of these things. And we yeah, saw yeah. a lot of organizations get in trouble saying, oh, we're not going to do this manual pen test anymore because we're vulnerability scanning. And then bad stuff happened because they are not, they, they, they are not the same thing. Uh, and I think that um, the idea of saying RTA gives the wrong impression that we're going to be able to automate things that smart red teamers have to manually figure out and collaborate on. So I actually like the term BAS better, breach and attack simulation, because what it's saying is we can take, uh, and, and I know that, that the BAS vendors, and I think a lot of people using them, want it to be a grander concept uh, right. than this, and they like the idea of this continuous validation uh, and, and it's very popular right now, the idea of continuous validation. Let's keep doing this. So we're essentially saying we want it to be like vulnerability scanning, mm. but we want it to be more focused on continually telling us and reminding us, are the detections and the alerts that we've configured, are they firing every time? And, and my question is, how often do we need to ask that question? Mm. Um, and I, I think that I think that's that's an open question. I, I don't think that's known right now. I, I, I do think that a lot of these BAS tools are still developing. They're still nascent in their and in their enterprise readiness for what they can do. I think in a lot of cases they're probably better at doing endpoint test cases than doing kind of full network stack test cases, just because there's a lot of complexity and typically some expert steps there. But this is an interesting uh, this is an interesting evolving space. I mean. W w uh, you asked me, do I think red teams can be automated? I say no, but I yeah. do think that there is an interesting analog of where um, a, um, a vulnerability management is to pen testing as yeah. BAS is to purple teams. Right. And so I think that regardless of if organizations are investing in these BAS platforms and trying to get some good mileage out of them, my caution to them is don't think, you sh don't think that that eliminates the need to do uh, manual, or as I like to say, expert, because manual for some reason sound, is, a, is a bad word. Oh, manual is going to take time. Of course it is. What are all the things in security we do that are manual? But fine, let's call them expert guided simulations the same way that even though we've been doing vulnerability management for a long time, we still do pen tests and we still do red teams. We still need those expert guided exercises. Yeah, that's good insight. So what, what are you seeing in the space, Chris, there? Are you, what's, uh, you know, have you seen um, organizations get mileage out of, out of BAS tools or, or uh, have you seen anything different than I have? A lot of orgs have it. I know a lot of folks I talk to have this, and I think there's a low uh, cost to entry for getting one of the BAS tools in your organization. Uh, but you're mm -hmm. probably seeing the same thing I am, where it's implemented a little bit, but not widespread yet. And whether that has to do with the, the, some of them require an agent to be out on certain endpoints or whether you need to replicate a gold image of, uh, of a machine in order to you know, run the tests um, and, and the, the, uh, the cadence in which you run those tests is also really important as you mentioned. I think they're getting there, but still underutilized right now. And I actually would like to see them more utilized I think the answer right now is, you know, can they can they automate red teams? Probably not. But I'd like some aspects of it to be automated. I'd, I'd like to take some of the, the test cases that we do and automate those out because there are a lot of uh, tools and tactics that the attackers use that are the same across the board. There's only so many ways to do uh, credential dumping right now, for example. So why not? Why not automate that portion? Yeah. Yeah, and then be able to be able to do that across systems. And I think that's one of the true strengths of the BAS approach is if it's going to be agent or sensor or however they conduct their testing is being, being able to assess different network zones in different environments, especially for large organizations. Even smaller organizations have, have different zones, right? They would have a DMZ, a corporate network, and maybe like a, a PCI cardholder data environment. And being able to just assess your security posture even at an, at an atomic level, that's useful. That's a useful thing to have. I think our message is that's not the whole, that's not going to be the whole picture the same way that vulnerability scanning has not been the whole picture. For the these next big, assessments. The next, yeah. And the next big challenge for them will be, can we do it in the cloud too? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I think that's all the time we have for this topic today. Uh, I'm Tim Wainwright, reminding you that I taught Chris everything he knows. And I'm Chris Lerno, and all that knowledge is stored right here. <laughs>